Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about things that you are probably going to have to accept, and this isn't popular, uh, some people aren't going to like it, but that you need to accept if you want to get big as a natural. So let me put on my plus five hat of weaponsmithing, work on skill at my crafting a little bit, and let's talk about this. Uh, now, as far as what I mean by big, I'm talking about impressively big, meaning if you're 5'9", 5'10", 5, 5, 5, if you want to be 180 plus, even up to 190 pounds with a six pack, this is what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about guys who want a swimmer's physique. Uh, if you want kind of the swimmer athletic look and you don't mind being 160 when you're lean and, and cut, at those sort of heights, I'm not talking about you. Don't worry about that. As far as certain elements of it go, the, the bulking aspect of it. Uh, because not everyone's trying to maximize the amount of muscle they can gain. Not everyone's trying to put on 25 pounds of solid muscle mass from where they're starting. Right? Not everyone's trying to do that. And that's okay. Uh, but what I will say with that, you still probably want to gain the muscle that you want to gain as quickly as you can reasonably do so. In other words, if you have a certain amount of size that you're trying to get to, it would probably be better to get to that size in a year and a half instead of four years if possible, which we'll get to the strength part in a minute for that. Uh, but what people need to accept, when you are natural, lean gains are very, very difficult to achieve. Guys who are like, oh yeah, you can gain, you know, large amounts of muscle. You can put on 10 pounds of muscle inside of a year while staying ripped. Yeah, best of luck with that. Uh, that's called drugs, guys. That's called drugs. Uh, it's very, very difficult to do when you, when you are completely natural. In fact, what do we know based on all the data? This is why we talk about fat-free mass index is because it's not that a person can't get to a certain amount of fat-free mass index when they're bulking, it's that they can't keep it when they cut down. <laughs> like when you start trying to get down to 8-9% body fat, all of a sudden some of that muscle starts disappearing. In other words, when you start getting on the DEXA skin, you might find that your fat-free mass index that got up to 26 is all of a sudden down at 23 when you get really, really lean. And one of the things that I've noted over the years is that the guys who end up being the biggest, who are natural, in fact, even sometimes guys on gear too, uh, are the ones who are willing to spend some time bulking and getting their set points changed in their body. In other words, the longer you hold a certain amount of muscle mass, the easier it is to retain it later. In other words, if you got up to a certain size and you maintain that size for that, all that muscle and strength and everything that you had for an entire year, or two years, if you diet down, it tends to stay better. Also, if you have to take a break from training, the muscle stays longer and it comes back quicker. It's one of the things I've noted with muscle memory. Uh, the longer you hold on to an amount of muscle mass, the more it seems to change your set points. And I'm not sure what the science is behind that. It's just something I've observed many times over the years. And people, and I know a lot of other people who've been in the game a long time who have made the same observations. Your set points seem to change. And some of the biggest naturals I've ever seen are guys who actually spent a long time bulking. They had, they had a background in some sort of uh, played football or they did powerlifting or whatever and they just ate a lot they got kind of fat got kind of fluffy got really strong built a massive base and then years later decided they wanted to get leaner they dieted down and then all of a sudden the dudes are ultra jacked before they were just kind of fat strong dudes but then they get ultra jacked and they retain that muscle better because not only did they create an anabolic environment that allowed them to get bigger because we start talking about natural limits we're talking about when you're lean Technically, natural limits start disappearing when people get fat. Why? Because food creates uh, muscle growth through the same pathway that anabolic steroids do. Overfeeding calories, particularly protein and carbs, does what? It causes extra IGF-1 release in your muscle tissue. That is the exact reason people use anabolics. That is the exact reason. That's what testosterone does. That's why testosterone makes your muscles grow. Uh, it's not as potent as, as the substances are, 
it's a but it does it through the same pathway just not as strongly so in other words overeating will cause you to gain muscle without even lifting weights so what ends up happening people who are willing to eat a little extra food and hold that little bit of extra body fat they stay in an anabolic environment for a long period of time they gain more muscle they get past really what would be what you would think of as their lean natural limit right it's much much easier to do then what happens you get used to holding on to that muscle and those people who stay that way for a while they tend to retain a lot more of it when they diet down if they stay there a while and their body gets used to holding on to that muscle tissue it becomes normal for it it's part of their homeostasis and i'm not telling you that you guys need to spend the next five years bulking or 10 years and stay fat i'm not telling you that but what i'm telling you is you need to put that into perspective that if you're obsessed with with short bulk staying as lean as possible than cutting and you're not going to be a competitive natural bodybuilder which i don't know why people choose to do that that's their business uh, unless you're going to do that you you are going to gain a lot less muscle you're going to diet it off quicker because again your body's not going to be used to the muscle the little bit that you've gained and it's going to be harder for you to hold on to it if you go ahead and just hold on to it for a couple years spend some time getting big not worrying about your abs you're going to be a lot bigger in the long run when you do cut down later and that's ultimately what it comes down to and i know that's not everyone's cup of tea but what i would tell people is if that's not something you're interested in doing then you need to get this idea out of your head that you're going to get big completely clean you need to get this idea out of your head that's just not based on reality not based on my observations over the decades uh, so that's part of it. the other thing comes down to strength guys you cannot separate size and strength until drugs come into you into the equation in other words 19 out of 20 times when you take a bunch of naturals in the room the strongest guys are usually the biggest guys when I say strongest, I don't mean the guys who can cheat the most weight up. I don't mean the guys who can bounce the bit, <laughs> the heaviest weight off their chest and lift their ass off the bench on the bench press or who can create a massive arch and an ultra-wide bench. I'm talking about the guys who can bench the most weight. Usually have, and I mean strictly legitimately bench it with a nice full range of motion, a pause, all that, tend to have the biggest chest and triceps the majority of the time. Guys who squat and deadlift the most tend to have the biggest legs and backs. Guys who can overhead press the most tend to have bigger shoulders. All right, so that's, that's just a reality. And when I say getting strong, do I mean your one rep max, your five rep max, your 10 rep max? Yes. Notice I didn't specify. Yes, those. Get strong. I didn't specify get good at training singles. I didn't even specify that. You just need to get strong. Because you know what? A guy who can bench 315 for 8 to 10 reps is pretty strong. Uh, that guy's real strong. And in my observations over the years, most natties who actually I look at and think that guy is big, almost every one of them, there are certain thresholds that I've seen that they're capable of doing in terms of things like the big three. Um, perfect example, take my bro Nicola Ella, who he'll probably comment down below. Uh, I think it's like, think it's like Croton 79 or something. I think that's his handle in here. He's got his own training clips. So the guy's been training for two decades, Natty, lifetime Natty. Very genetically gifted, has, still has that fat free mass index of 25. That's what he gets up to. That's what he's at when he's lean. So he's on that bleeding edge to where you, you want to scream fake Natty. Uh, guy's genetically gifted, but he's got a couple decades of hard work in. The numbers that you see the guys like that who can do, the majority of them, you usually see a 350 bench, a 500 squat, a 600 deadlift. That tends to be what most guys who are completely natty, who you see who are big, that tends to be kind of the minimum threshold that you see on their strength levels. That's usually what you see. Those sort of numbers are the norm. Those are the norm. That's what you should be striving for. Look at him. He can hit those numbers. A guy... Uh, we've seen him bench 315 for seven reps. That puts him at least a 350 bench. High bar squats. So that's an Olympic squat, 500 pounds. He's done it on camera. He can do 405 about seven or eight reps. A uh, guy deadlifts about 640. So he's in that category, and that's what I'm telling you guys. You cannot separate size and strength 
without drugs. And I'm not saying some people are not stronger than others pound for pound. Okay, we're not talking about just pound for pound. Pound for pound applies to your height. Your height is the biggest determiner in that. Uh, shorter guys are stronger pound for pound than taller guys every single time if they've been training on the same basic program. Uh, it's just how it works. But what I mean is just you cannot separate size and strength in yourself as an individual. As your, as your strength goes up, you will get bigger, and as you get bigger, your strength will go up. People just need to accept that and focus on the big lifts and getting as strong as possible uh, on all of your basic movements. And when I say as strong as possible, I don't mean just a squat bench deadlift. No, you need to be strong at a number of big exercises. And, you know, for a lot of you, you're probably going to have to do some refinement work also. If you're trying to get as big as possible, that might require you to do some other refinement work. Absolutely. Uh, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm not telling people <laughs> to not do any uh, accessory work or anything like that. I don't. That's not what I'm telling people. Uh, what I'm telling you is that you're going to need to get really strong. You're going to need to lift a lot of weight for a lot of volume. And you're going to need to do it for a lot of years. If you want to get legitimately big without drugs, that's what you're going to have to do. And if you can't accept that fact, if you cannot accept that fact, you're probably going to spend the next couple of years spinning your wheels and wasting time and not really getting to your goal. Uh, you simply have to accept that and just decide that that's what you're going to do and go ahead and do it or you're going to end up not reaching this goal and you're going to need to change your goals. Uh, and that's reality of you guys. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.